Hey, my name is Tim Buell. I'm a drummer living in Nashville, Tennessee, and this is the sixth installment of Finale for Drummers. And with each video that's come out, you all have asked a few questions in the comments, and I wanna answer those as best I can for you today, so let's get into it. Brent asked about how I moved a measure in a previous video from one system down to the next. You know, you have some measures on one line, you wanna bump them down to the next line, that's pretty easy to do. All you're gonna need to do for this is go to the measure tool in Finale. You're gonna need to highlight whatever measures you wanna move up to the next line or down to the next line. And then you just simply hit the up or down arrow key to move them where you want. So David and Jim had a question about why I use all stem up drum notation instead of having the hands as stems up and the feet as stems down. And I do this because for me, it's easier to input the notation and as well, most of the work that I do is with drum transcriptions. And these drum transcriptions are generally pretty intricate and they're not really meant for sight reading. I personally think that if you're doing a score and you you have a drummer that's going to be you know reading through a chart for a performance, stem up for hands and stem down for feet can be really, really useful. But for me, with transcriptions, it's a little bit cleaner and easier to see how everything lines up, so I do all stems up. But if you want to do stems separate, you know, feet stems down, hands stems up, all you're gonna need to do is put all the hands in with layer number one or whatever layer you want, and then put all the feet for the drum groove in layer two or some other layer. So when I do this, I use layer one for all the hands, you know, cymbals, snare drums, all that stuff. And then when I want to put in the kick drums and the hi-hat feet and all that stuff, I do layer two. You're just gonna wanna make sure whatever layer you're using for the snare drum cymbals, hands stuff, you're gonna wanna make sure that you freeze those stems up and you freeze the stems down for whatever layer you're putting the feet information, the kick drums and all that stuff in. You also might have to watch out for if you're using two different layers for your drum notation and you're using tuplets, every now and then you'll get a tuplet bracket or tuplet number in the middle of the staff. And if you have that happen, what you're gonna wanna make sure you do is go to document options, tuplets, Default placement for tuplets, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you select stem beam side, and that will usually get your tuplet marking where you need it to go. Jim and Lewis had a question about MIDI and using MIDI drums with notation. How do you go from MIDI drums in a DAW and import that into Finale as sheet music? If you're going from your DAW and you have MIDI drums in your DAW and you wanna import that into Finale as sheet music, what I suggest is you don't actually export that MIDI as MIDI, but you export that MIDI as Music XML. Once you export as Music XML from whatever DAW you're working in, you can then go to Finale, import Music XML, and that's gonna be a much cleaner notation. Generally, importing MIDI data from a DAW into Finale is kinda of gonna look wonky, so you're gonna to wanna to use Music XML to have a more consistent experience. You know, you export Music XML from your DAW, import it into Finale. It should be pretty close, but when I did it, I had to go to my measure tool, highlight all the measures I had just imported from Music XML, go to the Utility tab, and then hit transpose because everything was kind of transposed wrong. You might have to transpose your notation after you import from Music XML, but it's no big deal. You can highlight all the measures, use the transpose tool, and you're good to go. John had an interesting question. So in one of my previous videos, I had a drum legend at the very top of the transcription that I did. And John had a question about, you know, if you're actually in a score, how do you incorporate a drum legend? And what I would do in that case is I would either put it like near the cover page or if there's a title page or some kind of information page or table of contents, I would put it there. I have a lot of drum books that I've put out and usually what I do is at the very beginning of those transcription books, I'll put a drum notation legend and then the rest of the book that doesn't appear again. That way it's not taking up space on every single transcription that I do. So I would try in a score to put the drum notation legend maybe at the very end of the piece and you know make a tiny note that you can reference that if you need to or put it at the beginning of the piece before people read through the score. So Amy had a question about how do you make a template? Uh, in one of the previous videos, I spent some time showing you all the little adjustments I like to make to a finale document to set it up exactly like I want, get all the margins right, get everything laid out, all the text where I want it. And once you do that, it's kind of time intensive. So it's nice to not have to do that every time you open up a document. So if you have some kind of notation that you know, you have it formatted a particular way and you want to save it as a template, that's really easy to do. All you need to do is go to file, save as, 
And in the dropdown menu, select Finale Template File from the dropdown, name it whatever you want. And now every time you open that up, it'll be exactly like you left it. So you can open up a document once, tweak everything till your heart's content on you know whatever layout you want, and then save it as a template. And then you can just start from there and not have to do all of that every time you open it up. So the next question is kind of a group of questions. I did a webinar with a bunch of other great percussionists and score notation people on Finale's YouTube channel. We did this live chat and I got a lot of questions about something I mentioned, which was a stream deck. And a stream deck is a macro keyboard and there's a bunch of different ways you can use it. It is a keyboard that partners with some software and you can program the keys on this special keyboard to, in one press of a button, do several different keystrokes. The macro keyboard I use is called the Stream Deck. It's the 15 key version and you can buy one for around $120. So to give you an example of just how beneficial getting a macro keyboard can be, I wanna talk about sextuplets and how to make them in Finale. So in Finale, if you wanna make a sextuplet, what I have to do is I have to flip over to speedy entry, I have to click in the measure, I have to hit control and then six, and then I have to hit the number three six times, and then I have to switch out of that and switch back to simple entry, and that is a lot. It's something like 10 different actions I have to take to make a sextuplet. So I've programmed in my stream deck a way to, once I switch over to speedy entry, click the measure, hit one button, and it will make that sextuplet. Instead of me having to do eight or 10 actions, it's just me pressing one button. I have several macros I've created on the stream deck that take tasks that maybe take three to 10 different actions and it reduces them down to one. I can just hit one simple button and it does the rest of the work for me. All right, the next question is from the Rimshot drummer and Jim and they had questions about can you input drum notation in Finale using a MIDI drum set as the input device. So Finale using speedy entry partners really well when you're inputting information with a MIDI keyboard. You can use a MIDI keyboard to hold down a chord. You can use the number pad on your keyboard, press whatever note value you want on the number pad, and it will put that chord in. You don't have to click each note individually. Because drum sets, when you hit a crash symbol, you're not, you can't really, if you hit the crash symbol, you can't really hold the crash symbol down while you input it. So there really isn't a great way to use a MIDI drum set to input note values. The easiest way to use MIDI to help you enter notes into Finale would be actually just using a MIDI piano keyboard, learning what notes on the keyboard are assigned to what drums, and using speedy entry with that MIDI keyboard just like you would any other instrument. So in this comment, Steph brings up a good point in that Finale traditionally has only really offered discounted pricing for people that are students, people that are upgrading from something, or educators. And I have some really exciting news. Finale has actually changed the pricing for Finale. The new pricing for Finale was just announced and Finale now actually full cost of just buying it fresh off the shelf is $299. That's just now the new regular price. And if you are a student or a teacher or you're upgrading from some other software, the price is now just $99 year round. This is a change that really impacts me because I have a ton of students that want to use Finale. It's the program I use, it's the program their school uses. And if they decide to become a professional musician, it will be what most people in their field will be using. And this new pricing really, really makes it much easier for people to get a hold of Finale and start using it today. Nicholas has a comment about inputting percussion notation when you're working with a big score where percussion is only one part of the entire score and how it can be difficult to click in percussion notes in zooming in and zooming out. So two things that might help you if you're working with a score and you're having to input percussion notes and you're finding you have to zoom in and then you're kind of losing your place and all kinds of things. One, you can use scroll view. Scroll view is a slightly different way to view the score you're working in. Instead of having pages that you're flipping through, it kind of has everything totally linear. Your measures are listed at the top. It's a little bit easier to zoom in and out when you're working with a big score because you're not jumping around and having to worry about page breaks. So scroll view might really help if you're finding inputting percussion challenging in a full score. As well, zoom levels. You can put in custom zoom levels in the menu and this can be really, really useful for, you know, maybe when you're working on a general score, you can input stuff and you're it's fine. But for percussion, you're finding you have to zoom way in. You can set a custom zoom level where 
anytime you need to hit percussion, you hit a key command on your keyboard, you can zoom right in to whatever zoom level is easiest to input percussion, and then you can have another keyboard shortcut that zooms you out to where you were, and that might really help speed up your workflow. So I hope that stuff helps. If you have other questions about Finale for drummers, put it below in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to try to answer them if I can. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.